Well, good evening. My name is Nathan Zampronio. You know me. I've grown up in this community all my life. I attended Oakville Public School and I've had a lifelong interest in politics. I first ran for council in 1995 at the age of about 21. And I'm glad I didn't get in and so are you because I wasn't ready. I had to go around that mountain quite a few times before I learnt enough to be worthy. And even when I was elected to council in 2016, my goodness, what a growth curve that has been. For one reason or another, I have been the only councillor representing you from this area. Because we don't have wards, all 12 councillors represent the whole of the Hawkesbury. And I rather like that. I like going to every corner of the Hawkesbury, but home is home. Driving on the same roads as you, driving over the same potholes as you, using the same parks as you. My son, you know, was at uh, Oakville, uh, uh, Oakville Soccer Club for years and years and years, which made me more acquainted than anybody else with the state of both Oakville Oval and Colby Park. So being local is really important. And certainly there are unique challenges that face this end of the city. The suburbs of Oakville, Vineyard, Moralia, Pitt Town, Cat Eye, etc., represent about 11% of the Hawkesbury's population. But when I did a calculation a few years ago, I realised that we were carrying 19% of the rating burden. In other words, we're well overrepresented. In many cases, paying double or worse than double the rates of our peers in other suburbs. And we don't believe that that's fair. Council should abide by the rules of the rating manual that says that you have to be mindful of both your access to services and your ability to pay, which means that two families enjoying the same access to council services, rubbish collection, parks, pools or whatever, and enjoying the same relative degree of income and demography should be paying similar rates. So why are we paying double? Well, I'll tell you why we're paying double. Because the left-leaning council that was elected in 2016 sneers at this end of the Hawkesbury because apparently we're all so rich we can afford to pay more. And I don't believe that that's particularly fair because that's not true. We're working families and retirees and people raising a family, just like everybody else that pay normal rents and rates in Bly Park or Hobartville or Currajong. And I'm looking for this area to have its fair share. Many of the people that will tell you later on that that hike in rates funded a generous program of capital works and road ceiling improvement, I have a simple question for you. How much of that road ceiling and capital works program do you think we've seen in this area? No. Probably not very much. No. No. And I don't think that that's fair either. Even the money that I was able to fight for and secure to get Brennan's Dam Road and Old Stock Route Road sealed, after five years of council staff telling me that it wasn't on the list and a chamber of people who were predisposed to vote against that, I finally managed to get that through that was largely with the benefit of federal money, not even with the, the rate hike. So if you feel that you see very little for your rates, I have been a staunch advocate on your behalf. You know that I was elected as a Liberal five years ago and that I'm standing as an independent. And I feel liberated and empowered in an area that largely votes Liberal to effectively represent you better than ever before. And I encourage you to cast careful preferencing the major parties, unfortunately, want you to squander half of your vote by only voting one above the line and then stopping, which means that your vote would contribute to the election of the two or three on that one ticket that might happen to make it over the line. But you're not electing two or three councillors from one party, you're electing a chamber of 12. And that means that you should be numbering multiple squares above the line and not falling for that cynical ploy by numbering as many squares as you can above or below the line. Now, I also know that the issue that has absolutely split this community is development. And I know that even in this room, there are people who have been family or friends or colleagues who are split on either side of this divide. There are people that have lived here for years and want to continue to enjoy the rural amenity, despite the fact that the urban sprawl is knocking on our door. In fact, sometimes it feels like it's bursting through and breaking that door down. And then there are other people who have come in more recently 
and with some justification feel that that investment is something that they want a dividend on. And they would like to see the urban growth that we see on the other side of Boundary Road brought into this area for subdivision. And I don't blame people for holding that view. People that are approaching their retirement years want their nest egg, want something for their kids. But at the moment, our planning system won't even let you put a granny flat on your five acre lot, even though people in Bly Park or Hobartville on tiny little house blocks of seven or 800 square metres can put a granny flat in their backyard. But if you own five or more acres out here in Pitt Town or Oakville or Vineyard or Moralia, you're not allowed to do that. I have fought for you to have the ability to put a granny flat in your backyard so that you can look after your elderly parents in their retiring years, or so that you can give your kids a leg up in the property market and allowing them to continue to live in the community that they grew up in and not have to go to whoop whoop to you know, find a, a toehold in the property market. So I understand that people are split on this question, but the thing is, we have to be the people that answer that question. It's us coming to some kind of consensus and working our way through these issues. When I hear anecdotal stories of property developers and speculators uh, as being responsible for many of the more recent land acquisitions in this area, which is not yet zoned for subdivision, I worry that that pressure that those external forces bring to bear on this community and which further splits our community isn't doing us any service. In council earlier this year, I moved a motion to do the simplest and most respectful thing you could imagine, that we should have a survey of this entire community to come to a common consensus of what the future of this area should look like. My left-leaning friends on the council voted that down. Even the idea of asking you the question was rejected by them. And I don't know what the answer is, yes or no. I have my own views on this, but the thing is, to be a respectful representative, you're entitled for me to keep those views to myself and to listen to everybody, because I know the pain and anxiety that that's causing. The pain and anxiety that's caused by not having the final corridor of the M9 or out of Sydney orbital gazetted. Why don't they? I'm, I'm done. I've made my case, and I'm asking for your support to continue to be your sole representative in this area. I am still the only candidate standing from Oakville to be your councillor in Oakville. The last was Rex Stubbs. Please let me help continue that tradition. Thank you.